Yigwaya khwan shita khat yohan, huskana khutu da aatya khana, putu sakho awa tlakho na khawe, ya atas khu wa a, hanak hu gu jatlayat ke. Etlik nakh adi wa sahati wa sakho, ka yeet aya yitu ye yet hi ye. Wan qanins, yan slain, wan qanins daak na da, hati wa sakho kho a yitu wu wudu wa ka ye. Ye awa kakak tu aak, ya tila aan ka qasakha nawi yi jik tu ti, ha tu wasa gu tzu. Kalke gukhla zi awa yi qusti yi tila kat yu haan, ya tlak nakh adi ka yash ka hit, ya tila kat da shit ka qu u. Kal ha tu wa ushko, ya kudak i ka ya nakh awa yi, we tu ni gu. Tish, wuch in chasa ti ya yi dat qanu ya kha ya ti chu tai wush din tul sha di. Ha tu wa sa gu kunakh awe. He shwa sa ka kwa ti yi daat. Cha wa sa aya yi tu wu ka waat. O haan sa wush tu tu da nuk yi tu ni gu. A cha wa ha tu wa sa gu. Ha yu khatang yi ya a khi ya yi dat. Haji yes wudud liyech awe ha yu khatangi. Haji yes wudud liyech. Ye awe daas da ya ye khat yaw saqa. Kha akhti wa sa gui sa ku. Cha dza yaak awe. Kha ka kha awe wa tu wa akh. Ha da da ya. Shtik akh tu tu ya yi dat. Kuna chish. Yike yohan. Akla amlyech kagane, yedu asa kani jules ble kachinach, ha yandashani fluent speakers, klingel yuchatangi keishi, yedu asa kha besi kuli ble kachinach, kha anyatlahash yedu asa kishkitan nashadahani, Sam Johnson ble kachinach. So I just say that just to honor them for making this prayer. Um, it was made um, after Taku Kla Pearl Keenan, um, like thinking of her in mind as well. Uh, so yeah, I memorized this prayer. So sometimes I miss out parts when I'm saying it in real time just because I'm nervous. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> how do you want to just line by line? Um. Yeah, I guess maybe why don't you say it, and then if anybody has a question, go ahead and ask it. Otherwise, I'll point out a couple of things. Okay, okay. I'll just say the klikai. Uh, let's go like maybe one sentence at a time. Okay. Ganachish uh, akstati. My master. Akstati. There are a number of different ways to talk about... Uh, whether you're talking about God or the Creator, uh, some of those ways are informed by Christianity, which is absolutely fine. Achtati uh, might be somewhere in the middle. Daki and Kawu or Ha and Kawu would be informed by Christianity. Hashagenya uh, is an older term. You can also say Achish Hashagenya and stuff like that. It, it's it's a, when you say ha shagenya, it's the creator. When you say hastu shagenya, it's a helping spirit for people. Okay, uh, I'll probably only point out one thing as we go through these next ones. You should recognize a lot of words and then kach. Uh, kach is for, and it's like for the benefit of something. Uh, so we'll just keep an eye out for it. Uh, it does pop up for protecting something. Like you'd say, hit kach a deis ach keitli. The dog is protecting my house. So that something kach is what it would be protecting. Uh, other times it could be used, it's used a lot in prayers to say like, it's not really to give something for, it's for its protection or benefit, is how I would usually think of that word. 
it, it is the one I think you use in I'm proud of you. But it's not the one that says on and moving around. There is a different identical kach, but it is not this one. How is it different from yis? Yis is sort of like, uh, it's more like to give to someone. But there's a, we'll have to go through and sort of, I'll put it, I, I'll put it on my list of presentations to build, but I will do a presentation on these different ways to say for. But a lot of times, yes is sort of like, the basic of yes is sort of like, it's a gift. It's something I'm giving. Uh, so I could say, I worked on it for you, which I would, in my mind, it's sort of like, I did it so you didn't have to do it, that kind of thing. Um, I worked for your benefit. So it's a little bit different and it's not like a, it's sort of a sentimental or spiritual benefit is how I think of that. And yes is a little bit more straightforward, like to give it to you, especially if there's j in front of it. It's for you to have. Good question. Yeah, maybe we'll do oh. go all the way to Yandashani. Okay. Uh when kah kawai tlatki hakusi Any questions about any of those things? Do we know what all of them are? Yandashani. Yeah. So yan yandashani is getting old. So when you say yandashani get the people that are getting old. Uh, it is one uh, like you could say kashan shawatshan. It's not the same as ishan. It's a different one because that in itself is one verb root ishan. It means pitiful or pity. Shan does mean to get old, so Ishan uh, Yandashan. Sometimes the old people will say that. If you know old people really well, sometimes you can tease with them about it. Um, but I think as well, there was a, a Haida. Everybody see the Haida language film, Edge of the Knife? And if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. But these, and there's a scene in there where these two older sisters were teasing each other about growing old and a younger woman made a joke about getting old and they both just kind of glared at her and everybody just stopped and realized she had made a big mistake and then she just kind of went into a humble posture. So you want to make sure you're not doing anything like that. But you can talk about Yandashani Ah and they do talk about this in Tlingit, which is they're saying, they're often saying protect them, make a path for the elders, help them through the snow, you know, just a bunch of stuff, you know, serve them the food first. So there are a lot of uses for this. Uh, yan deshan is, uh, the first word is ya, and then nadeshan uh, is where you would have sort of, um, you'd have nadeshan, but ya contracts the end. So you get yan deshan, just like yan agut or yan chagut. And then uh, the I at the end turns a verb into an adjective. So it's called the attributive suffix. It works exactly like the possessive suffix, except it always stays low. So that's when you go yake for good. And technically you should be saying yake utat, yake yi khana, yake yi sitka san. So uh, it's turning into yak-e-ye with that suffix, which sometimes gets hard to hear. Uh, the film is on a lot of platforms for you can rent or purchase. You could probably buy it directly from them if any of our Haida scholars know. I got mine just through Apple TV as bought it. And it's fabulous. It's all in Haida. 
is scary. So just be warned. Uh, you know, we told those Gagit stories when I was growing up and also when I was living in Kassan. So uh, they really matched up well to the way that I understood Gagit stories to work. Any other questions? Uh, I guess there, there is a speaker who was talking to me about the difference between tuk and ang. So if I said ha tatki and ha ani, those are kind of different things. How are they different? Tatki is like dirt, right? Mm -hmm. okay, so it's more of like talking about like the physical aspects of it. Yeah, so tatki is like the soil, the dirt, the land. On is a village or inhabited land. So I would say, if someone just said on dekhagut, I would think I'm going to town. So, or like, ach ani de nachtua, let's go to my village. So I think that the speaker said, she thinks it's great that they're using ha ani so much, but she thinks of that as saying our villages in hatatki would be all of the land that we, that belongs to the Shingen people. So they do have some different uses. This is also the things where you'd say like from the earth or something. You could, might say, Oh, way of life was born through the dirt. Uh, which, you know, as in Hawaii, and they have kind of similar concepts when they say Aloha Aina, uh, love the land. Some of the teachers that I worked with, they said, well, are you working in the land? Are your hands dirty? Are you out there? Or are you just buying the shirt? And so I ran out and put dirt on my fingernails. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, so that's the difference. And do we know atkatu ati? Land of the forest? Yeah, those, that does often refer to land animals. Uh, it could refer to all animals, but I think of it, there's there's land animals. Then within there you have uh, so, or is all animals. land animals. Hintak water animals. are flying things. And then you have kayani. For me, those are all under this category of and that means those things that breathe, that live. Any other questions on those sections? It's a quick question about the orthography. Oh, hold on. Our, our sound just cut off. Yeah, sorry, this little thing has been failing me today. I don't know what's going on. Okay, can you folks hear us? Uh, okay, can you say it one more time? I, I Just a quick question about the orthography, just to refresh my memory. When it's the slant looks like it's going up, that means uh, long and high when it's going down it's long and low uh when it's up it's short and high when it's unmarked it is short oh. and low when there's a downward mark it's long and low and when there's the hat thing circumflex it is long and high here i can share this one thing that you can screenshot quick if you want it's So this is from one of the <laughs> down. Old orthography. Wrote that. <laughs> uh, Yake, did you screenshot it, Junie? Uh, goodness, cheesh. We were sort of trying to use these days. Lear orthography and Dauenhauer orthography, because I think old and revised uh, is maybe not quite there. Th that one is newer. But I, and then I would also say um, 
inland and coastal is kind of dangerous because it creates this, there are cultural differences between there. So then it ends up with like, well, this is associated with our culture and this is associated with your culture. Then I also think Canadian and American is also bad because then you might confuse it with national identities. Um, but I also, I think they're both great. Downhower, I like that, Downhower orthography and Lear. And yeah, you just attribute it to who sort of did the final refinements on it. Which is which? The down, we use the Downhower orthography and they use the Lear orthography. Some, some folks do. And not everybody uses this. Uh, but yeah, the vowels are written differently. And then the other difference is for the, the underlines, you'll get an H after the consonant. Well, I must admit that when I'm using my phone, I put the H in because I can get the, I can get the vowel accents or tones mm -hmm. uh, off my phone easily. But the underline... I'd have to install something and I can't be bothered and I'm okay with the H. <laughs> yeah, the chert. Yeah, there's an app called chert which will allow you to type in any Alaska native language. So you want to chat with your Nupiak friends, you got it. Tlingit friends, you back. Gwich'in friends, of course. Okay. Oh, you okay? Yeah, we'll do the next line. Okay. Uh, Ha ididishin gach tu shal gu gu er gu gu gu. Oh, okay. Any questions about that? There's a big word in there. So the big word is uh, so that it can happen. And let me tell you the cheat code for how to put this together. If you want to say, like, I came here so I could eat or whatever, did this in order for this other thing to happen. The second one that is in order for it to happen. Um, anybody know how to say this? What is this verb coming from? Anybody know? Gook. gook. Yeah. Gook. So you'd say like tush gook. We know how to do it. Uh, have we gone over the difference between uh, ausaku and ashagook? Okay, so these are two verbs that have to do with knowledge. Ausaku is knowing facts and information. Ashagook is knowing how to do something. For example, I might be able to tell you all about basketball, dribbling, shooting. Maybe I could coach people. If you get me on the court, I just can't even dribble very good and throw up bricks like crazy. So maybe I know about it, but I don't know how to do it. So that's the difference between coo and gook. And I do hear both of them used to talk about our language. Maybe you want to know Tlingit. Maybe you want to know how to do Tlingit. For me, there's a bit of a difference there. Ausaku would mean I can usually hear things and know what I'm hearing. And shakuk would be, I can make it, I can use it myself. So the way you get one of these is a little complicated. But if you can look up the hortative form, so for example, you could say, uh, let's go. Let's eat. So let's, let's use katucha. Underline G, A, T, O, O, underline X, A, A. Katucha. Let's eat. So I might say, hot watuwa at. Katucha yit. So you put a T on the end of the hortative. That's how you get 
to do the verb. It's a little bit complicated, but you will see speakers do this. So you get help us so we can know it, so we can master it. That's another way to think of that shaguk verb, is to master it so that we can do it. So to shaguk is how you would say it. But you would say, kach to shaguk, let us know it. Kach to shagukut, or kach to shagukut, it should be long and hot. Um, so that we may know it. So it is a complicated verb form, but if you wanted to start to use it, you can use things like, I came here to do, I, I came here to chew bubble gum, right? I came here to uh, beat people up. I came here to eat food. Whatever you came here to do, I came here to study. You look up the hortative form, you add a T, that's your starting point. If you want to start shifting that hortative to me, you, them, us, that's a little bit of a longer conversation. But I just want you to know what you're looking at there with that nice, big, juicy verb. And if it ends with a vowel, you're going to put, sometimes you're just going to put a, another vowel on there. Because to say, you couldn't really say, gachtushagukt. It's just a little too, you got to add a vowel to give yourself some room. Okay. Okay. Slakat ad anadach yenesne. Okay. So, uh, uh, one of the things you've got here is chana, which is made up of two parts. Ch, the mouth, and niya. Niya is a word you're going to see all over the place, and it's going to pop up as niya, niya, or yina. And it means a bunch of different things. It could mean in the area of something. It could mean right next to something. It could mean in the way of something. And it could mean blocking something. There's a word, hoon, which is the north wind. The thing that blocks the north wind is called hunya, which becomes hunya, which then in English, when it gets anglicized, becomes huna. So it's in place names. There's a group of Tlingit called Sanya. There's another group called Hinya. And so you'll see this, there's a group called Nanya Ayi. So sometimes it refers to in an area. Uh, sometimes it refers to something next to something. What they might say, sit on the next chair over. Uh, and so sometimes it needs a little bit of pointing and direction and stuff like that. But when you say Anya, it's getting in my way to talk. It's blocking my speech. It's preventing me from talking. It's like almost like a lid on my mouth. So then what they're saying, to cut at everything, ha ana dach, from blocking our mouth, ye nasni, do it. So the ye nasni, which would be ye nas ne, uh, for northern Tlingit, is the do it verb. So there's a whole bunch of things you could say, itika ye nas ne. Fix, and it, it could kind of mean fix up or do it. And it could also mean move a bunch of different things. It's another one of these verbs that depends on the context. But that's how you say, that's what that one is doing. Any questions? Okay. Hayashagagu. Uh, so uh, there's a verb in here, which is uh, you could say shuagut would be basically the past tense, and that means to lead somebody. Basically, like, uh, if you know how to get to this cabin, I might say, Ade ha Lead us there. So that means you walk, 
we follow you. So that that is how the term is working to lead someone, mostly by sort of like showing them where it is. Not, and it can be used metaphorically to say like, you will be the leader of this community. Or, you know, it is used sometimes to talk about that. The verb itself, uh, it means to walk someone to the end of it. Not like you're going to push them off a cliff or anything. Um, and then you get an interesting verb mode in here as far as motion goes, which has this g conjugation prefix and ya in front of it. It's one, I, it's just, there's a whole bunch of these things where it's like, that's just how it is, just remember it. So if you want to tell someone, uh, for example, we use this one in the language nest. Because as we talk to other teachers, they said, you know, you should be telling kids what to do and not what to do. So we could say something like, don't run around. But we should be saying, walk. And it's no direction, it's just saying, walk. So like if there's a cage here and I say, that dog should just start walking. He's like, I don't know where to go, but I'm just, they just said to walk. And so that's what you've got here. Ha ya lead us. Ka, oh, you want to read the next one? Ha ya satan. This one I hear out of Teslin. Um, it sure sounds like uh, lift up our arms. That's what it sounds like to me. Um, or maybe put put an arm to our face, something like that. Um, but when you have this ya, which is a... They, we're going to run into a couple of these things where we've got a ya-like thing, which I think is maybe related to a face, but is a little different. For example, when you say things like ya kudzige, they are intelligent. Or you say at ya awune, respect. That ya, I think we're usually translating it as intellect. So, ke jisatan on its own sounds like lift your arm. So it's saying lift your arm towards our intelligence, which, which could mean like or our intellect. Uh, so it does sound pretty metaphorical, but I have heard this on multiple occasions for translations coming out of Tesla in particular for bless us. But I didn't recognize it when I first saw it. I'm going to check the chat. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, hushin, hushin adi, ah, the ones who lead us. Yeah, uh, Okay. So, ku'u is people. Ha ku'u is our people. Um, you can say ha'in, ha'chan. There's a bunch of different ways, like people we are among, uh, but the ku'u is people. I think a good way to sort of use this one as well is kwan really refers to the ancestral people of a place. Like if I say ch'kut kwan, I'm talking, I'm thinking of the clans that are in the Chilkut area. And, and that would include people who are adopted. But this would not include everybody who lives there. Those would be ku'u. Those are people. And it's used for a different yis ku'u. There's a dance group called yis ku'u here in Juno. It means the new generation. Or it could mean young people. Period. Uh, has to okay. uh, in with them. I probably write yan han as two different words. Uh, han on its own is standing. Yan han means remain standing. So if you want to make a statement of solidarity, like let's say uh, I got a friend who. Uh, their, their child went through an incident of discrimination at their school. So if I was going to go with them to say, I'm supporting you, 
and I'm here to to be here to, to support you. I could say, in yan chahan, I am standing with you. And if you change in to dot, you'd say, I'm supporting you. I dot chahan, or I dot yan chahan, I am supporting you. And that means I'm standing around you. Uh, and those are really good ones to use. Like we did do some speeches last night for what we things that you would say, like if you were to speak to a clan when they lost somebody. Ye dot yan hasnak hashik ohas. Our ancestors are supporting you. Kinde ha gashat. It is uh, hold us up. So kinde is upwards. Ha is us. Kashat is a, um, and that shot should probably be long and high. I don't think that one goes. It should go low in that command form, but that's a verb that doesn't have a low form. Uh, so kashat is to, there, there's an interesting, so the shot verb root has to do with holding on to something, I think. But you could say g shot, and that's usually catch it. Kash shot is hold on to it. They are a little bit different. So kash um, shot could also mean like uh, like someone's trying to get away from us. I might yell kash shot, grab them, and then we then we got them. Kinde is the directional. And you can also, there's other things I've heard with this. Hakina tushashat hatachankiyan. So, okay, I gotta do this whole quote. Going back to Dastiya and her father. He's the one who said, Chitakdach hakina keutusanak hatachankiyan. Kushtiyach. Which is even from long ago, we held up, we held our grandchildren above ourselves. It didn't matter if there were things we didn't want to share, we would give them to them, the ones that would become our grandchildren. Uh, and so here you also have this shot, and so it means to hold. So this is how you would hold. Uh, if any of you have been uh, parents or older siblings or aunties, uncles, I was flying back from Petersburg. I'm not trying to say anything bad about anybody, but there's a real little airport and there's a real young mother with a real tiny baby. She was going through the security and it was very, it was a lot and she had a lot to carry. But she put that baby on the edge of a table and was going to turn around and grab some stuff. And I, remember, I was just frozen looking at us. I was the wrong person, but luckily the right person was there, which was the lady who was scanning people's tickets. And she said, oh, no, no, no. And she went over and picked up the baby. And, you know. So that's where you'd say, shot, grab the baby. Um, OK. Uh, shoot, I should have said Shaka Uhan. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but... All of us, yeah. Hold us up. Hold all of us up. Uh, okay. So that verb is the asking verb. So in the object is who's getting asked, the subject is who's asking it. So I could say, I'm asking you. You're asking me. Um, we're asking you all. We're all asking you all. So, um, would be the command form. Okay. Uh, yes, the cut uhan hashlitin. You could probably say as well, like we're going to look after each other, 
Uh, but like, so the shetin verb is to watch something, but it also means to care for it. So this is a, one of those, another one of those ones that has a double meaning, which is important to know, because if someone says shishtin, they're not saying, watch yourself, sucker. They're saying like, take care of yourself. That's why you say, tin shishtin, take good care of yourself. Um, or like, uh, let's say I was getting ready to go out of town. I call my Tlingit speaking friend. I might say, uh, Los Angeles de Kakodakin. Yito a guess a goo. Ya ach kaitli. Ya shatini. Do you want to watch my dog? I'm going to Los Angeles. Uh, so that's like dog sitting, babysitting. There's also a protective. So there's a program in a building right down the street from us called Heen Shatini. The watcher of the water, of the river. So ha shetin is a command form for watch over us, which is good for prayers and stuff. Um, shush in nagach to'at. Shush in is with the self, um, which is, you know, and so yagach to'at is, uh, Ya gachtuat. We're gonna. We are walking. Let us walk. To, that's another one where chush could be whoosh in other situations. Uh, I, I want to talk about whoosh and tin and in for a second. There is a bit of a pattern here. I don't know if it's fully documented, but it seems like so. Chush is chush, right? And that's. To the self, I think in this case it's probably a low tone. Uh, so chush is to the self. So chush in would be like with yourself, which is kind of interesting. I think it could mean with ourselves in this instance, but so could wooch. So whoosh and wooch are the same thing. They, they seem to be interchangeable to me. But then the general pattern is you're going to say in if the word before it ends with a harder consonant, and you'll say tin if it ends with a vowel. So I would generally say wooch in or woosh tin. For me, those are the same things. There are some people who think in might be a little bit more like a living thing or a human and teen is non, but I don't really see that pattern when I listen to speakers. I think it more has to do with the sound that comes before. So you could you could also say in Yagahtuat. Let's walk together. With respect. So that is a the noun version of that verb. So it is, there is a verb to respect things. So you could say, uh, there's a story by Cyril George where he starts out, he says, Hastuyayakane. Respect them. That's a command form. Hastuyayakane. Chaan kuak again. Wushia ayatine in Nijagah. Okay. Cha'an. So this, uh, well, let's start with pu'a. So we've probably seen that a whole bunch of times by now. As far as what it means, it kind of depends on how it's being used. It could mean kind of however, like uh, I went there, however, I didn't see them. That one works. It works pretty well for that. It also works really well to specify who we're talking about, right? And you? Uh, right? So if, uh, if someone was here and they said, uh, uh, I got a sore throat, can you order my food for me? 
and then they point out what they want. And I'm, when I think it, restaurant worker comes over, I might say, Naya di achtuasuku hukoa kink. Right? So then that's the whole order. We've got half dried fish and stink heads coming right at us. Cha'an is a little bit different. Cha'an is sort of like nevertheless. So they, they're related, but I see them as different. So it's a little bit of a harder logical term. So, you know, that's the thing, like, I wanted to go there, but this other thing, and so it's a little bit hard of a, a logic turn, is what it seems like to me. Cha'an can start a sentence, but kua cannot start a sentence. You would usually say akua or cha'an kua. So cha'an kua is like a pretty hard stop. Like all of these things, then like this big thing. Okay. Uh, and then we get kedain, which is an adverb to do it well. Wushya ayudinein. With respect of each other, ye we're going to work. Okay, that's fabulous. Oh, let's see, let's catch up with the chat. Oh, stand firm, okay. Oh yeah, gachtutin is one word. So next, uh, we did have a question uh, right before we started, and I want us to look for a second at this. So this is um, a slideshow about putting suffixes onto bases and how they change. So some of the things we look at is like to is inside of something. And it's usually a closed container or an abstract concept. So you can decide, I think your head is a closed container because that's also like you have thoughts. So usually when you're saying ach tu, it could be used for a bunch of different things, right? Like, um, you, this is where you're getting to wu and to wa. But th those, those are different, right? So basically, there's a bunch of these suffixes. The CH can mean one of two things. It means that's the thing that does it or causes it to happen, or that's the thing that it's done with. We get that from context. Like if someone says, uh, what H, what H, that's a nice one to use the CH. That means you first. So we're doing something scary. We're going to jump off this cliff into this lake. And you say, gook. I say, what H shukwa? You first. Uh, so that's using that CH marker. But if you said, kuhi dutch ashawachich, I wouldn't interpret that as the pencil clubbed them on the head. I would interpret that as they clubbed them on the head with a pencil. Right? So you get it from context. Ka is to go after something. So that, and so this is another for type of thing, but it's like, I'm going to walk over there to get them. It could also mean, in some instances, to wait for somebody. I'm going to sit here and wait for you. Or I could say, Stay still and wait for me. Dach is from. De is towards. N is with. Nach is through or along. The T is at and usually arriving. W 
is generally located somewhere, not using a verb, is kind of residing or resting somewhere, or a time marker, and then is usually moving along or repeatedly coming to. So those, those are the four ats. All four of those mean at, but you got to say like, how is it there? Is it resting? Is it moving around? Is it just generally there? So as we go through, we, we've seen some of these. Tuqa, shtuqa khattati. That's the one right in, oh, that's actually a different one, sorry. Never mind. There's a different qa, which means pleasant. Oh, wait, I've got that one. Ah, junk. Okay, I said the wrong one. So this is usually a high tone one. Sorry, I gave you guys the wrong one for this one. And it means pleasant, liked, wanted. So you could say qayati. It's pleasant. Qaqati. It's gonna be it's gonna be nice. And that's where you get shtuqa khatati. It feels pleasing to me. Uh let's see. In other instances, that qa could mean sufficient. From the inside, towards the inside, through the inside, at the inside, also at the inside, and then we have residing inside, which is often two, like ha tu ye yeti, ha yu It's that one right there. And then tu. But I'm going to copy this to wu. And then we're going to take a look at how this one can sometimes go through a bunch of different changes. So I think this one goes through quite a few changes because it has quite a few different uses. So this one, tu wu, is you're getting uh, tu plus wu to be at. I do believe there is a variation of this that just changes a little bit to show that we have, we're talking about something a little bit different. And what happens is the tone jumps to the other side, which is really interesting. And so this to would mean uh, is inside. I gotta make this a little smaller. This to is going to be thoughts, feelings, intentions, desires, um, spirit. So it could be any of those things. But there's another one you can get, which is t plus ya, which is the face. So when these two encounter each other, you do get another one of these things where the words have to change a little bit to show that there's some special meaning going on here. And this is where you get to wa, and then that equals want or like. So just in terms of like ach to wu, my feelings. That's usually going to be my feelings. Ah to wa, I like it or I want it. There's not always like a very clear logical connection here. It's more like there's a bunch of closely related things in Tlingitundatani, and that's and so it's going to differentiate for, with them a little bit. So then we could put like ah for that. So and we could put ah for that, and we could put ah for that. So here we have, it's located inside me, like maybe I swallowed a quarter, something, and it's telling you where, where it's at. This one is talking about my feelings, intentions, and this one is I want it or I like it. There is a last double bonus round, which is ach tuch. Uh, and then there's also Ach tu wuch. So this one 
if I said wasa itu wuch. So I would hear speakers say that to each other. And it's just sort of saying like the context I usually hear this one is what do you think about it? So for example, there are these two elders, uh, Shakshani, Marge Dudson, Kahuan Ish, George Davis. I worked with them a lot on translation stuff. And sometimes one of them would come up with something and turn to the other one and say, Wasa itu wuch, which is very short form to say, what do you think about that? The tone is really interesting with all of these uh, because dach is the only one that seems to steal the tone. Sometimes we call it tone stealing. And we'll go through this whole slideshow and what you're really looking at is what do the vowels do? Because sometimes, like this is one of the ones that likes to stay hot. Most of them, when you put a suffix on there, it'll push them to go low. Uh, but this is one that resists it. And almost all of them, except for two, duh. Uh, and I don't exactly know why. It's one, another one of those sort of... When we get in... It, it's a pretty advanced realm when we start talking about, like, what do the vowels do and how do they do it? And we end up with sort of a whole bunch of, like, this is what they usually do, and you kind of got to remember these handful of things. Okay. That's quite a bit to cover... An hour. How's everybody doing? Okay. Sunday, Okay. Break time. Uh, come back at 10 till. And we'll pick it back up. It's Chi Shu Han. Okay. So uh, we're going to take a look at some of these phrases from Hatu Nagu Yis uh, with the intention of preparing us to sometimes use the language in a ceremonial context. There might be a time when we're asked to stand up and give and, sp and speak, and we might be the only person in our community or in our family that's currently learning the language. So you might be learning and at the same time having to stand up in front of people and do big things. So sometimes in our classes we will have opportunities to do that and sometimes we'll have opportunities to practice. And the way that I like to do it is to sort of go and highlight some of the things. And these are just some examples. And then what we'll do is we'll start picking some of these speeches and going through them. Uh, but I just want to sort of share some gems from this and, and talk about how I think about them and use them. So this first one is from Keith Yanai. His name is Willie Marks. He's Chukinadi. And I believe he made a recording of himself because he knew he was kind of on his way. And he asked that it be played at his Kui. So he actually re pre-recorded a speech to play for people after he passed away, which is really wild at the time. And uh, in in one of the speeches that he made, he said, uh, which is really an amazing concept. So he was talking about a brown bear and how they've noticed that the brown bear uses skunk cabbage to on an open wound so it'll put skunk cabbage on itself and so chun is the wound there is a verb so it's both a noun and a verb root so you could say uh uh what did chun i got an owie i got a i got an injury and then you there's an l classifier version which would be to hurt to injure somebody has to chuni is their their wound, their injury. A day. So there's a bunch of things that have a mouth or an opening. So you can say a day for a bunch of different things. Feeding the dog, making a 
spiritual offering of food to ancestors, uh, putting you know water to your mouth. It can be a whole bunch of things. In this case, it's towards the opening of a wound. So hastuchuni ede. The S is the contraction of hus. Aguchaat is to move or carry personal belongings. Ya yi, this, you alls. Kasag is joy or fun. Uh, there is, so again, there's a noun for, there's a verb, and then you could build a noun out of that verb. So kasagu would be, it's, it's fun, it's exciting. And then kasagu would be fun or excitement or joy. So they're going to put, they will apply joy to their open wounds. He's talking about here the process of grief in Shingit, where you do, like if you're giving speeches at a funeral or some sort of funerary event, you do tend to keep them short. You do tend to talk a lot to the clan who experienced the loss, and you also acknowledge the people who are helping. Uh, and you talk to the family who has lost someone. It's not, sometimes I've seen master speakers wonderfully tie a story to a funerary event. It's got to be relevant to the atu of the clan who just lost somebody. It's not a good time to do autobiographical stuff. It's not a good time to lecture anybody. It's not a good time to talk about how cool your guys are. It's just a time to be very cautious and very supportive of people. But at the Pu'i, typically someone has a year to really, really grieve. So it's totally okay if they kind of fall apart. They would often cut their hair. They would wear black. Sometimes just every day they would put black on their face. And everyone would just know they're in mourning. And they would help them out. They would take care of them a lot. But after the year, you're kind of expected to begin the process of healing. So they would have a cry song to begin the Pu'i Viji. One or two, they usually do four of them. Two of them from the opposite clan and then two of them from the host clan. And that's a really intense time because a lot of people know that that's their, they, they want to give one big cry before they begin to move on. And not that you forget about it, but you just but you do have a process to rely on. The opposite clan will stand up and and wash, like physically wipe off the black from their faces, and then they tip it over to joy. So they'll bring out a dish and they'll talk about a bunch of ancestors and say, hey day, and then they'll go out and they'll burn the dish and you're offering it to your ancestors by saying to their mouth. Then the clan leaders especially and the, the high caste people will try to get everybody to start laughing. And it's, it's a really difficult thing to do because we're moving from mourning to laughter, which is not what you're trying to do at a funeral. You've got to know how these things are supposed to work. But at the Kui, once you've gone into what they call the fun time, that's what he's talking about here. It's like that is a healing thing to laugh together, to eat. And I was, the way it's explained to me by an elder from Cake, is he said in Shinkitundatani, what Wasa Aya etu yeti, Kakone kakiha, etu tsuka kwaha, Dasa etu yeti, Ayana kekuchitsi. So the way it was explained to me was whenever you eat, you're going to be feeding your emotions as well. So if you're real angry and you eat, you're going to get more angry. If you're real sad and you eat, you get more sad. And sometimes you want to experience those emotions. But collectively, when we're trying to get people towards a healing journey, 
we try to get them laughing because we want to feed that joy and we want it to grow, especially when we're together. Like those people and their, their emotions, how they interact is really interesting. Ask questions if you got them, we'll keep going. Uh, there is this thing called kawayik. Uh, sometimes the K falls off. And it means into space or into thin air. And that's what you talk about. The verb here is dakach, which is for things to fall into a pile. And so the, you'll also hear to echo, to drift, to fall. In. This is said a lot to sort of so basically, if there was some sort of cultural event, and if I stood up and spoke Shingit, and then I went and sat down and everything just moved right along, I would certainly feel like nobody heard my words, nobody cared, and they just let them drift off in the space. So that's where someone, what should happen is someone from the opposite moiety needs to stand up and just say something. And there's usually specific ways things are acknowledged, but that way, it's not just like falling on deaf ears. So hearing people and responding appropriately is important. And that's what this one is talking about. Next one. Uchke <laughs> At some point, we'll look at some things like this utika, uh, which is a complicated verb form, and it, and it means so that it doesn't happen. Uh, so you, you hear it in songs like cha adeye unatika, so that it doesn't turn out that way. Uchke uh, can pop up. So this verb is yati, that's the positive form. So yati, uti, utika, nati. You can see this verb just change quite a bit. Yekoti, all these different things. If uchke pops up right before that, it means out of control and sometimes doing harm. Uh, it's like they're sitting against something solid. Achkikutu. Uh, uh, the ones, the ones there, from it, uh, good fortune will be in our hands. A while ago, I heard these words from your lips. Ziyak is a while ago. Uh, I heard, I could hear it from your mouth, or to your mouth, right? Yuchatank uh, is speaking, or language, or words. Uh, a similar one is underneath it. A while ago, language or speech, I was going to I will bring it over there. Yatat, this one here, I should cut before it. Thank you to your father's spirit helper that made you say these words when my little grandchildren here stood with them. So we have gunachish, thank you. Iish has. When you have kinship terms and also plural kinship terms, and you're having something that belongs to them, you don't need to have has do. So you could say ikla has, ikla uh, has dot. It's about your mothers, right? You don't have to say has do dot. Shagenya, uh, we see it being used right there. Achyech uh, It's kind of like the thing that they said it with, which is being interpreted as made them say that. 
Achtachankisani, my little grandchildren. Yach, here, on, with it. Hasputanaki, they were standing, when they were standing. Stekatyuhanya taki ati. Ye yet the way, Shachlegatz, Urke a utera, ye yukatangi to Kawayikt unakifka. Stekat you han, all of you all. Ya dark ye a di, you all emerged, you came out. Ye yet, Shachlegatz. Uh, it's like, um, for me, the visual here is like, um, and there's a whole bunch of things that go to the face because your face goes down when you're sad and up when you're happy. And those, those things get sort of, they transfer over to metaphors. And in this one, it sounds to me like I'm going to prop a house post up to your face to keep it from going down into sadness. So that's the bracing part. <laughs> so that nothing bad so that nothing gets out of control and hurtful. So that your words don't run off into space. Because, you know, the, the off into space thing is, there's a whole bunch that's kept in line with balance. Like balance really keeps things going. If the crow side or raven side does one thing, then the wolf side or eagle side should be doing another thing. Whether those are in joy, Oh, you guys sang a love song? All right, we'll sing a love song. Oh, you guys sang a cry song? We'll sing a cry song. You guys made a speech? Okay, we'll stand up and receive that speech. And because if you don't, then things just drift off and it starts to get out of balance. Uh, the next two I haven't finished, but uh, really neat stuff about... This is from Natla, and she's talking about a frog hat. And what I really like about this one is how we'll take a look at her speech, but she starts saying some really in incredible things about this. There's a hat there with a frog on it. Then she starts saying this frog is going to come out of its den. And it's going to take your grief and it's going to burrow down into the earth with your grief. So that's how she's talking about overcoming grief is like the things that are symbolized by this at are going to come and rem take that from you. And it's, it's just really amazing stuff that we'll take a closer look at later. But just as this is a sensitive time uh, with losing a speaker, like I wanted to just sort of start to examine some of these things. We'll take a closer look a little bit later. Any thoughts or questions? Let's go back to our story. Uh, so we've gotten to Raven and this little owl. He's going to send this. It, it, there's some drifting going on. He's tying stuff to the, the owl and he's talking to him. Uh, so this is kind of where we left off, uh, just as sort of a recap. Uh, Raven it's resting after rebuilding the world out on the Aleutians, sees a volcano, the fire, he wants to get it. He starts, there's no fire that exists back at this time. He starts asking all the birds. Uh, he starts walking around asking the birds to go get it. They say, no way. He runs into this owl that has a very long beak. And... Uh, I think he talks him into it because he's tying on this pitchwood uh, tape. I think pitchwood is probably a good, dried pitch is fine. Uh, pitchwood is one that Kei Shi told me and she likes to use that one. Uh, so he ties it to the beak and we start to see he's instructing him to fly through the fire with this pitchwood and then um, the little owl listens to him, but he tied it far back to recap again so it doesn't burn his beak and fall off. So that now the beak is going to have to burn all the way back, basically. And he has an octopus beak in his pocket. 
Uh, and we'll find out why. And now he is here saying, is there any way you could bring me that fire? No way, my nose is going to burn off. Uh, and then he said, oops, is this the whole thing? Do we get this far? Hold on. <laughs> is this the wrong one? Okay, you got, you got a special preview. I think we left off here, which is, <laughs> is there no way you can... Um, you're not sharing that one still. Oh, I'm not? Yeah, you're sharing <laughs> There. Dang it. It's like, hey, wow, we got really far. <laughs> you got some answers in your pocket now. Um, uh, now you know I got two versions. Okay. Is there no way you can bring that to me? That fire. So he's asking this kind of tricky question. And then we get, no. Okay, now we've left up here. Okay. Did we go over test our day? Doesn't know. Doesn't mean no way. It means no way. Okay, so we'll, we'll give you that one. No way. Okay. Anybody want to read this one? A duck and a cheese. Anybody have any idea what that translates to? My nose, although a duck yeah, so a uh, duck from it or off of it. I'm going to burn. Burn. So gukkagan would be a future form for it's going to burn. My nose is going to burn off. Ah. Uh, okay. uh. What is the a uh, in front of duck? Does it mean one and then refer back to two? A uh, ku. The R that's attached to duck. Oh, it's it's. So um, that is a good question. So we'll go kind of back to here and not yeah. We're gonna look for a. Uh. Mm, here it is. So this is a, uh, which is it. And it, when it takes a suffix, if you put the ch, you get uch. That's where you get like uch away, because of it. A ka away, following it or after it. A dach away or ach away. So what you're getting is these combinations that are really interesting. They're doing somewhat unpredictable things with the verb, but Really what is going on is there's certain ones where you're putting it on there and it's dragging it long and long. A day. Every time you say a day, it's towards it. On, with it. Anach, through it or along it. At, arriving at it. Abu, it's located there. Ach, or a. A is probably more common. A yeyati. It's there. And Shingit loves to use this once it's already named it. So for example, I might say, Natasahini, you do a sag has to ani. A awe dachnach shingit inach you hasha atri kutzati. So it's a place called Natasahini. A yeyati, it is there. Or I guess I should have said, A has. Ah ye hasyati. They are there. Dachnach klingit dachnach klingit chinach yu Two klingit speakers. And then also ach. So this is every time you see a dach or ach, it's a combination of these things. 
I'll put this slideshow up uh, tonight so you folks can see it. Whole bunch to it, uh, and we'll start sort of referring to it a little bit more here and there. Good question. Uh, next line is a repeat. Ach chiw, ach kukakan. Ach and adach are interchangeable. So this is, and we might say, my nose, though, is going to burn off, and my nose is going to burn off. <laughs> okay, can someone read this next sentence? You might know what it means already. Oh, and the next one down. Yeah, yeah, I forgot to fill in these green. So let me just go through and we'll find some of these things. A day. So these are all these directional things. We're just sort of looking for them. Okay. What kind of things do we have here? So yakea. What is that? Uh, a good one. And it could be good one. So this. This ah uh, is a pronoun, which means one of them or some of them. And so there are ones that are just sort of uh, a good one or good ones, uh, bad one or bad ones, Ketsini uh, strong one, strong ones. So this is showing how this combination can work with a verb that's getting that little suffix on there, and then ah. Uh, it can also work as an object pronoun. So I could say, ah, ha, I ate some of them. So I might be communicating to you that I didn't eat all of them. Right? Okay, a good one. What about, ah, ye, Oops, that should be high, sorry. Do we know that ye kukwa'u verb? Should we go look at it? To the verb dictionary. I was looking up amaze. Uh, amaze is another one with this ya on there. Ach ya kutwune. They amazed me. Let's see. Look, ooh. So I'm going to go down to the O's. So there is this one for buy something. And then we go up here, and then there's a few other ones to own or possess or to have, to put or to leave. So here we've got at a place, and then yay, and then zero classifier and ooh. So if we see that, like this is at a place, and we go back to the the sentence we we're looking at, we see ah ye kuk ko ooh. So that's the one we're looking at. Um, so we're gonna go look at we're gonna go look it up in the dictionary so we see put. So we're gonna go up to put and we'll see million things, but we'll go find this one. Put on, put off, put back. So once we get to put, put them in the pot. Let's put 
downy feathers. Well, these are duck. A duck's downy feathers in the pillow. Uh, and so we see the two right there. So there's usually a directional in front of it. Ka ye na u. Tu ye na u. A ye kukwa u. So what do you think? A good one. Can I ask a question about that? I, so you don't have to have the before the verb. I thought it, it just is any place. Yeah, OK, that's it. Yes, it doesn't have. It can be. You could say day. Uh, you could say dach. Uh, but in this case, that can just be nothing. It doesn't have to attach to a vowel. Like you, a lot of times you'll say tu or a, uh, and it doesn't need to have that. But in and for some for some handling verbs, you can use dach and de and nach. This one it might be more common to see it as just because the verb is actually putting it somewhere, it might prefer it to be ka or tu or a, uh, because you can't really put it there if you're taking it away. The duck is how you'd say pick it up or take it off of it. So how are we going to translate a ye kukwa u? I am going to give you. No, really, it would be like iji, iji ye kukwa u. I'll put it in your possession. But where am I? Where is? Where am I going to put it? On your nose. In this case, ah, uh, the ah uh, would on translate it as or on the one. There. There. I will put it there. Mm. And then we'll get. Then we get to where it. Then it clarifies where it is. What issue So just to clarify, the a with the two double a's with the high tone. That's the there. There. Okay. Right. So we we use this all the time. So going back to our example, Natasahini Yuduasakhastu Ani Ah Ye Yeti. So then it switches once we've named it, it switches to ah, just like once we've named the person, they switch to do. Mm. Because it's the same thing. It just loves to just switch it over. It's called a third person non human pronoun. Uh, no way I was actually talking about this to me the other day. Because he was saying um, there was a yauk in the story, and the yauk wasn't referred to as the yauk anymore. And I was like, how did that happen? Right, and so they'll say a yikt, or they'll say a da, and it just does it all the time. And then like, a ah would be at that place usually. Yeah, so it's like an equation, like it equals that at that point, and then it'll equal that for the rest of it. Yeah, and think it loves it. It just tells you what it is, and it switches to a third person after that. Okay. What about ishlu wu i ti? Your nose. Is it footprint? No, it would be names. Like yeah. Where your nose was? Where your nose was. It's a nice comforting thought. Oh, it's a good one. I will put it there where your nose was. Ye ya nach ke kwak e. You might also say a ya nach ke kwak e in this case. Is that the ke kwak e that is like it will be? It, it, it will be. And what's ke? It'll be good. Good. Right? And then what about the ya nach? Have we looked at that one yet? Ya nach and kin are opposite concepts. Similar to tunach. It might have a similar structure, but yanach in in this case, we usually it follows a noun. A yanach, 
more than it, a kin, less than it. A yanach ke klok e. It's an e. It's a better one. It's better than before. A ye kukwa u a isu wu. I guess it'd say it will be better. I will put one. I guess it'd say on your. Uh, I will put one there. Your. No. So it's a pretty sort of like literal translation, like word by word. Well, if you're to sort of take a look at these two, what is Raven saying to Kuk? What is Ye saying to Kuk? Is he talking about the octopus beak? That's exactly what he's talking about. He's like, I got a better nose, man. I'm gonna, I'll put this right where your nose was. It's going to be even better than it was before. Uh, I'll help you guys out with this one because this is actually an undocumented verb. Aowe, yan owe, ayakawa ka, yakak, ye. Aowe. I usually translate that as uh, so it is, uh, so it goes, something like that. Yan owe, ayawa ka, yakak. He convinced him to do it. And then sometimes, like this is something like if I was doing the translation, I would be adding sometimes little words in English. So he convinced them to do it. And you might even say, so it is, he convinced that uh, this owl to do it. Raven did. But we see in the Shinget how there's a bunch of stuff that English has a lot of little connecting words that I think Shinget doesn't need to have. Is that, the same, oh, but, is that the same root ka to tell, but the aya ka makes it a different verb, makes it to convince? So yawa ka is to say a certain thing. Yausaka is to say a certain thing to somebody. Kawaka is to command somebody. And then Yakawaka is to talk them into doing it. All related, all sort of tied back to this same verb root. Uh, you, when you deal with Raven stories too, you get a bunch of really unusual things, which is fun. Right? It's sort of like, Learning from the best, but you know sometimes it creates some real logic puzzles. Okay. So that ka is the ka that's un undoc like undocumented on the verb database. The part that's undocumented is having both ya and ka in front of it. Oh, okay. But luckily, we had, uh, but this it's and just because it's undocumented, like as we find undocumented verbs. Those are ones we sometimes go back to the speakers, these, especially these nine sort of speakers we have left, and ask them about it. And this one was translated by Nora. Mm -hmm. So luckily, luckily we have it here. And there is, there is stuff we can do. Like once we know, I think another verb, it might be documented, but maybe not. So we've got yawaka. I'm just going to do this next. Too. So we've got uh, I don't want to do this. So we've got yawaka. I know we're at time. I'll be fast. Maybe. Okay, so let's just kind of go through. We've got yawaka, and this is say a certain thing. Then we've got 
Yamdu. A yausaka or a yamsaka and say a certain thing to them. Right? So you do, that's why you have an object there. So you say, Khat yausaka, said it to me. I said it to you. Then we've got, um, oh, I think this one is a kawaka. I'm going to have to check this one. Hold on a second. Uh, for the lying one, I just learned this one a couple, or I think a couple days ago from Shkuyesh, and it was like yam dudzika, and that refers to somebody lying, right? Or I guess the context would be the full sentence, but that yam dudzika sounds to me more like it, it was said to them. Okay. Oh, here it is. Yeah, it is a color. So a kawaka is to send on a mission or command. And then we get a yawaka, which is to convince them to do it, to talk them into it. So the things that we have here is we have ya. So that would be ya, zero, ka, object, ya. Well, I guess I forgot the subject. Ya, subject, zero, ka. Object, ya, subject, s, ka, object, ka, subject, zero, ka, and then here you've got object, ya, ka, subject, zero, ka. And so this is how you can start to sort of get the verbs and sort of see. And if you add any of these prefixes or change them, now you've created a new verb. Um, so a similar one would be, uh, this was another verb that I think, I don't know if this one was, so you say akawanik, and that's to um, tell it to them. And then akawanik translated it to them. So that's another way where sometimes you get, but once you sort of figure out what it is, then sometimes you can you can match it to the patterns that are already there. So if you have if you know how to use a kawanik in a bunch of different ways, this one you put kha in front of it, and that's the only thing that changes. So I could say if I say kananik, tell them. Hastu in kananik, tell them. Hastu in kananik, translate it to them. So it, it doesn't. It doesn't change significantly. You add kha in front of it. Ah, Ganeshi Shuhan. Now, Weya is your teacher on Thursday. Now, Weya be Yadu. Oh. I don't know. I was I was not sure whether or not I should be there or not. If you do, you want to be? I don't know. Usually, I'm at home, but just it's because I catch the bus, so it takes a long time to get back to Douglas from UAS after okay. six p.m. Let's do it from home. That, yeah, okay. I I just like to know before I end up here in a room by myself. Yeah. Everybody, stay home on Thursday. Enjoy your time with Noea. I will be. Uh, I'll be in Los Angeles. Ooh. Okay. Good cheese. Good cheese. Good cheese. Good cheese. Uh, is that for your commercial? Yeah.